170 million years ago, if you went for a swim back then, you wouldn't have noticed much of a different ocean. It would still be wet and cold or warm, depending on where you are. But some of the animals would be quite different from today. But I think the main difference would be if you got a U-boat, a submersible, and you would go way down, you would not find any chalk down at the seafloor. And today, if you did that today, there's a lot of chalk on the seafloor. The chalk on the seafloor is essentially a buffer um, against increasing build-up of acidity in the oceans. So like ocean acidification today, we pump a lot of CO2 in the air. Some of that CO2 will end up in the oceans and that automatically leads to more acidic oceans. Um, that acidity needs to go somewhere and calcium carbonate is generally um, the material that will react with the acidity and dissolve. Um, if you don't have that buffer material, the chalk in the deep sea, something else will need to start dissolving. That something else might be the animals that are still alive. So we used a huge database uh, where fossil occurrences from all over the globe are collected from the last 500 million years and we have a total of 400,000 fossil occurrences that we used. And uh, from the environmental side we used a compilation of temperature data from the literature, or again thousands of, of data points. And um, for the ocean chemistry there are models developed by other authors and we just uh, chose the, the best one. And uh, we brought that together with the results of Uwe's experiments um, on calcium carbonate precipitation. The main finding is that the first 350 million years of animal evolution uh, were mainly dominated by environmental factors. So marine calcifying animals were very susceptible to changes in ocean chemistry or climate. But in the last 170 million years, these environmental controls became less important and instead predation or competition would become increasingly important. In the situation we're in today, where we're dealing with biodiversity crisis, we're dealing with climate change, ocean acidification, it feels like everything um, is out of control a little bit. And a lot of it has to do with us humans tinkering with the planet. I think it is utterly important for us to understand the history of how we got to our world before humans start tinkering with it. To, to develop an understanding of how long it takes and sort of the magnitude of change that is required to get to where we want to go back to. So what we're doing now, the change that happens now, will take probably millions of years to undo if we get past a certain point.